Well, we want to get started, everybody. Thank you for um, for uh, zooming in tonight. Um, basically, we've got a full night planned for you, and I just thought it'd be great to sort of explain the format of how tonight will kind of run, and then we'll we'll get started. Um, we've got some new panelists, which I'll introduce to you, but um, we'll hear from them. We're going to look at a passage of scripture in Matthew. We're going to talk about the article that was posted on the Zoom call. We'll have a bit of a discussion in the breakout rooms, in some breakout rooms, and then we'll come back together and have a panel where you can engage with the panelists and engage with us about this idea of um, showcasing Christ to our kids in our homes. And so uh, it's a real, this idea was uh, birthed out of um, somebody from our church in Warunga just saying, hey, what would that look like? How might we be able to do this? So uh, we want to serve you, we want to equip, equip you the best that we can. So what I might do is I might just start with the word of prayer and then we'll uh, look, if you've got your Bibles, we'll turn in our Bibles to Matthew. But um, let me just start us off with the word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity um, and technology that we can seek to encourage one another, um, particularly in the role of parenting and particularly with this idea of how do we showcase you in our homes to our children. Uh, and Lord, we realize that um, we need your help um, in a task such as this. And so, Lord, we ask for more grace, we ask for wisdom, uh, and we ask ultimately that we would leave this conversation in awe of you and what you've done for us on the cross and how that affects us, how that affects our marriages, how it affects our parenting, how it affects the way we live and move and breathe. And so, Lord, we uh, depend on you tonight, and we ask that you would work in all of us and encourage us greatly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yeah. So what I would like us to do is, um, if you've got your Bibles, um, uh, turn in uh, your Bibles to Matthew 7, um, 24 to 27. Um, and I'll introduce our panelists in just a second, but I'll start with us reading this um, passage and then um, talking about that, and then we'll hear from our panelists. But Matthew 7, 24 to 27, I want to read these words, and then we as a panelist are going to talk about this passage of Scripture um, and um, what stands out to us. So, Matthew 7, 24. Everyone then who hears the words of these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Now guys, I thought it would be really great if we were able to spend some time kind of just talking about this passage and, and what it actually means for uh, how this can influence us as we think about showcasing Christ um, to our kids in our home. But before we do, I think it is probably, I, I jumped ahead of myself, I think it'd be good for the people who are tuning in to actually hear who you are, um, how long you've been married, how many kids you have, um, and then perhaps maybe this, what's something that you enjoy showcasing in your, in your home uh, as we kind of think about this idea of showcasing Christ and then have this scripture in mind. So what if we start with Katie Christina? Uh, you introduce yourself <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> All right, uh, my name is Kylie. Uh, this is Christina, my wife. We've been married 23 years. So, um, yeah, we've got four kids. Um, one girl and three boys. <laughs> <laughs> and then the age of my, my oldest daughter, she's 21. And the boys, Elias is um, 18, Carl is 16, and Paris is 11. Okay. Um, and Christina, what would be one thing that you guys enjoy showcasing in your home? Like you have a special treasure or something that you. Yes, we do. Oh, you do. Oh, oh, she she it. It. <laughs> Show and tell. Okay. So, uh, we are a very magical family. 
Um, so I just want to showcase you some of our stuff that we enjoy. Yeah. So awesome. this is Germany, sauerkraut. Uh, <laughs> we do love our German food. Yeah. Yes. But we also love all our African tradition and food. So this is an African art. This is an African art. I can put it on if you want. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Uh, this is so important because um, you know Nigerian they like parties, and so if you are dressing or anything, you really need to have an art. Right. So this is special. It's like yeah. your identity. <laughs> and obviously, we are now in Australia, and that has also become part of our identity as a family. So wow. very multifaceted. That's <laughs> awesome. So that's very good. Yeah, great. I didn't bring props. No, nope. yeah. okay. that's okay. That's all right. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Richard. This is my beautiful wife, Rebs. Um, we've got three kids. Uh, do you want to share what our three kids are? <laughs> <laughs> Just sharing the conversation. Uh, we've got Lucas, who's six, Eleanor, who's four, and Nora, who will be three next month. Mm. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, showcase it well. I've got something too. Here we go. <laughs> Other than my, I think my mentor. Um, well, something that we really, well, I kind of treasure is um, in one of our Friday night date nights, uh, Rebs bought this thousand piece puzzle, and so during our date night, we spent a lot of time having good conversation, but also um, you know getting all those thousand pieces together. And now we've completed it, maybe about. A, well, I think it was pre-COVID, that's how it was, but um, Rebs took all the video of um, framing it on our wall, and so it's like this really nice thousand piece puzzle stuff on the wall, and it's all our heart and effort that we put together. Um, so yeah, we'll be treasure that. That's cool. Nice. Yeah. Would that be the same treasure for you, Rebs? Um, we have these little squares of photos yeah. on our wall, and um, it's cool because when most of the people who come over now, which is our <coughs> church family, all those photos are from before we met them. So they get to see kind of photos of our kids when they were just born, photos of us, pre-kids, and we like taking them through memory lane. So that's mm. fun. That's good. Yeah. That's really good. What about you, man? How many kids do we have? Yep, and one of their That's what I was <laughs> Uh, we have seven kids. Oh, I thought you were No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot about them. <laughs> um, they're two boys and five girls. Four boys, they're outnumbered. Um, and uh, they go from 23 down to 11. Fantastic. And what's one thing that you like to showcase in our home? Um, there's a uh, wooden sign at our front door, and um, if you've been to our house, you may or may not have noticed it. It's right at the front door before you walk in. And our son made it for us years ago, and we wanted the words because of the cross, meaning, you know, because of the cross, we have eternal life, or we can uh, be made right with God, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, he burnt that into a piece of wood, but then he did it in six other languages as well. And so it's actually a really great um, talking piece sometimes. If, even if delivery people come to the door or strangers come to the door, they're like, oh, that's nice. What does that mean? So that I really love that. And I love that it's the first thing you see other than the shoe pile at the front door <laughs> or the dirt. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So I, I do. I think the thing that I like to showcase about the house that we're at at the moment is our backyard. We have a nice little, if you've been to our house, we have a nice fire pit area. Uh, it kind of looks like tribal council. Um, it's lit up with like the tiki lights and stuff like that. We get like to that. fight the kids out. <laughs> yeah. um, but that's an area that I like to uh, sort of uh, go to. And so I just wanted to start by saying thank you to Richard and Rebs and to Katie Christina for joining us tonight and, um, and really sort of um, teasing out this idea about showcasing to our kids in our homes. And so as we have thought about um, you know, this and then looking at this passage in, in Matthew, um, what stands out to you guys in these verses? Uh, you know, what challenges you from these verses? Any thoughts or ideas, particularly when we're thinking about yeah, showcasing Christ? Richard, I'll start with you, man. Right. Um, 
So when I read that passage, um, the first thing that come, came into my mind was um, just our situation about two or three years ago where, you know, we had, you know, our third child who was just newborn and we just struggled um, to read the word. We struggled to just enjoy, um, you know, what the Lord had provided for us. And, you know, through many conversations between us, we just thought, you know, this is just, you know, the season that we're in. You know, it's a hard season and we kind of try to justify it, try to justify it as though it's the season that we're in. But as I was reading this um, word from Matthew 7, it kind of reminded me that, you know, this specific passage doesn't distinguish between, you know, what season you're in. Um, but it says, you know, a man who hears the word and um, listens to it and does it. You know, he's a, he's a man who's built, uh, built his house on solid rock. Mm -hmm. And I really felt like, you know what, you know, I don't know what type of season that you guys might be in, but it doesn't matter what that season is, the Lord requires of us to kind of read the word and meditate on the word and really act upon those words. And there's grace in that regardless of what season you're in. And so that really encouraged me, especially as we showcase, you know, Christ in our lives, um, regardless of what we're doing, we just want to really delve into the word and find joy in that. So mm -hmm. that's really good. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. Others? Yeah, I think just in the line of what Richard had just shared, I think for us, um, reading this passage, um, you know, it's like bringing us back to the beginning, bringing us back, like um, parenting particularly, um, is not like if in time of storm or challenges, but it is like, when it's going to happen. You know, because in parenting, there's a lot of challenges. But again, um, looking at this passage, it's really encouraging, saying like, okay, you need a foundation. Mm -hmm. And Christ is a cornerstone, mm -hmm. you know, where we can build on. So there is a foundation that we need to build on that foundation, not our own foundation. So it's a beautiful reminder that I can come back to him, I can bring my kid, I can bring my weakness back to him. Yeah. Yeah. I, thought, I found it staggering that this is kind of the conclusion, actually, sort of the end of that Sermon on the Mount. And, you know, after all the things that he's just kind of gone through from chapter five and taken us through in chapter six, and then he's kind of finishing about everyone who hears those words and does them will be a wise man who's built on the house. And it just made me think of that priority of wisdom in our homes and actually building wisdom into our um, our children. I think it was um, Dave who said uh, this Sunday, uh, past Sunday, the Sunday before, but it's kind of like you don't have to teach your kids not to be grateful. It's almost like they complain, they come out complaining. You have to teach them to be thankful. Um, and I think our kids, you know, naturally are just going to come out, you know, as, out as foolish. <laughs> and how will we, um, you know, teach them wisdom. And, um, you know, the Lord, uh, you know, Jesus on earth is kind of teaching us what wisdom is. And I just, I, I was really um, grateful that, you know, this is our, you know, the best preacher um, and our savior kind of explaining what, what uh, wisdom is and the foundation, this, this, yeah, the strength that it is. What about for you ladies? Anything that stood out for you ladies in these passages or in these verses? And so I was just thinking like uh, building um, a house of sand might, you know, sometimes seem like the uh, easy way to do it, you know, like, okay, yeah, it's good enough, it's all right. And I, I just compare that with, you know, when, when we parented our kids, we, we heard many things, how to do things, and sometimes it was hard and, you know, it would, would be okay to say, all right, everybody's building it on the sand, looks, looks kind of obvious, let's do that, and it's good enough, um, but it's not, it doesn't pay off. You know, and it can be sometimes harder to find, like, taking that picture, the, the right location, find a good rock, mm -hmm. and maybe you need a bit of machinery, a bit of tools, you know, to, to get that house really on that rock. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's harder. It's you know, parenting um, in the way God wants us to parent our kids. I think it is harder because it's not the obvious thing. You know, that the world is advertising and saying, and everybody is mellowing with it. Mm -hmm. 
it, it requires sweat and stress and you know so yeah i think that's a, that's a that's a really great picture and also it, it, it could be like um, you know, when you do this, other people might say, oh, that's ridiculous, you know, why are you doing this? You know, why are you believing what Jesus says? You know, this is, this is you know, it's, it's, not, it's not really like what is modern, what is good now, or what scientists have found out and all that stuff. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think for me, I was challenged because I think it made me ask myself, what is it? What is the foundation? we're building, you know, our children on. Mm -hmm. And I think in this current time, there's just so many opinions and so mm -hmm. many, and you know, I think our parts are prone to want different things too. Like we want them to have a great education. We want them to grow up um, in a certain way and eating certain foods and, mm -hmm. and those are all great things, but here it says, the solid rock is God's word. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it made me examine what my priorities are and whether I, I am building, um, I guess, or encouraging them to build their house on, on the solid rock of his word. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second thing was how it says the rain fell and the floods came. And I think I was struck by that again because it's it's guaranteeing that they'll come mm -hmm. like it's, yeah. it's gonna come yeah and so um you know it's gonna come in their lives at some point and um what's their foundation gonna be so good and yeah so that was really challenging yeah beautiful <clears throat> any feedback yeah actually very similar to um reps is are the things that stood out to me that challenged me i think questioning what am i doing am mm -hmm. i building wisely or foolishly. You know, Proverbs talks about the wise and full of foolish woman. Mm -hmm. The wise woman builds up her house, the foolish one tears it down mm -hmm. with her hands. And um, that's always a challenge, you know, and being wise means obeying God, what God has instructed. And similar to, I think, both you and Carrie, that it's not a matter of if storms will come, they will, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But what stands is what foundation I have Firstly, for my own life, what have I built that on? But then what am I hoping to build for my children? So it sounds like what we're saying is that showcasing Christ is really, uh, you know, knowing what his word says that, so that we can showcase that to our our children. And I think that's that's really true. And I think that's what's really beautiful. There was the article, I don't know if you were able to read the article that was um, attached on the Zoom link, but we're just going to have a little conversation around um, that article. And so I guess I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, as we think about showcasing Christ, um, would there, uh, how did that statement in the article land on you? If you want Christ to be your child's first love, you must make him your, uh, must make him your own. How, as couples, when you're thinking about showcasing Christ, how did that land on you um, as in, well, it's first of all got to affect me? Yes, I mean, if I want to, if I want to make my kids, or if I want to put it in this way, if I want to put God in front of my kids, then I personally need to be a worshiper. Mm -hmm. Because um, children, we respond to the action than what I say. So um, obviously, and that is the hardest part because I need to live that life. So my lifestyle, like from waking up to going to bed, should be a lifestyle of worshiping. The way I respond, my patience, um, the way, the time that I spend with them, um, because they wash everything. So, uh, and I think that is just it. Because, you know, you're building for future. We, we are not just building even now, we're building for eternity. Mm -hmm. So these are kids that God gave to us. And so, um, yeah, I, I think um, my lifestyle is the, key, is the key out of it. I need to watch what I do, the way I do things, and uh, and how I love God. 
how I love God through my time and prayer, because that will come out in my parenting. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'd agree with what Kyrie said. Like, even as I look at my daughter, who's just three, she loves to imitate what we do as parents. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we think, yeah, she doesn't know much, yeah. but she actually knows a lot. <laughs> um, and, you know, I like just that kind of reminded me of like, I think it was when we were at Southern Grace Moronga, I remember seeing during worship um, one of the parents holding their daughter, it's probably a three year old kid. And, you know, the parent was just worshiping, putting their hands up, worshiping full of joy. And you can see the child also putting their hand up and worshiping full of joy. Mm -hmm. And that just really affected my heart as well because what you see is that the child sees what the parent does, it wants to imitate that. Mm -hmm. um, and so just going from that, I guess, in our lives, in, my, in our own places, you know, who's the center of, you know, who's the boss or who's the center in our lives? Is it myself? Mm -hmm. And if I make myself the center, then I think my kids will see that. And as they grow up, they're going to want to make themselves the center. Mm -hmm. And that's not what we want to do as kind of saying. We want to showcase Christ and we want to make Christ the center of our household. Mm -hmm. um, and we struggle to do that, um, honestly, but I think it's a continual reminder that we can we try to give each other that you know, we want to make Christ the center. And if they see that, they'll go up and see that and replicate that in their own lives. Mm -hmm. I love what you're saying, Richard, because I think that's so true in that um, it's not always something that we do um, every day 100%. Mm -hmm. um, and there are times that uh, we will we will fail. And yet, how you know, showcasing Christ Mm -hmm. um, and showcasing his word to our kids is actually in those moments of weakness being able to go, you know what, this is a mom and daddy yeah, <laughs> and need the gospel Jesus. and we need to ask for yeah. your forgiveness because we didn't, we, you know, this, Christ had to die for this or this is something that would have been, you know, um, though it didn't bring glory to God. So therefore mm -hmm. I need to humble myself um, out ask the Lord for forgiveness, but I also need to forgive, ask forgiveness from you. So um, it really is true. It's got to start with us and it's got to come out of us. Um, and I grew up in a home and at uh, um, a place where it was kind of like, uh, do as I say, not as I do, you know? And I think we as parents can sometimes get into that sort of um, that thinking or that pattern, but actually um, being able to kind of fuel that um, love for the Savior ourselves. And so I want to ask you, how would you seek to make your joy in Christ evident to your kids? What are ways in which, first of all, you fuel your own heart with um, your love and joy, but then how, what would it look like in your homes? How do you seek to um, make his joy evident to your kids? I think it could be like throughout the throughout the day, like with little things, mm -hmm. you know, uh, for example, how would you respond if there was a disaster in the morning in the house, yeah. you know, like, uh, and to be honest, that has been hard for me, <laughs> you know, sure. uh, very hard. But um, yes, in, the, in those moments, I think it would be so powerful if, if we were responding with, um, okay, you know, let's, let's bring this to Jesus. This is, this is really difficult, but we trust that Jesus will help us through this, you know, and kind of showing that we trust in him and that we still have joy, although it was a really disastrous morning. Um, and yeah, I think that's cool. only one spirit who can help us with that. Yeah, because yeah, it was yeah, more, true. yeah, but I think the way we respond in difficult situations, I think that, that can show we have a deeper joy. It's not just yeah. the joy, okay, today is, the, the sun is shining, that's great. We can share that with our kids too, even say, oh, look, it's, it's nice weather, thank God for that. Maybe it's really nice today. But I think also in moments where it's not good, how we how respond. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very key moment because the kids actually, they, they, they observe your, uh, your attitude or your response if there is any incident. Maybe those incidents are not even because of their, what they did, but for the, maybe something just happened. They always think that it's because of them mm -hmm. in their own thinking, so they get nervous. So for us as a parent, so if you say, yes, you need to tell them, okay, this is wrong or this is that, but just to see, to, it's very important. I mean, I know I do struggle with this, but just reminder that, okay, you know, how do I find 
the supremacy of God is suffering. And how do I know, okay, this moment, yes, it's not looking good, but um, I'm not just looking at this moment because my kids are washing me and they're washing my action. How do I begin to just look beyond? So, you know, that the body language, your response is very, very important. You know, and so it is very, very important because they know, okay, my dad, I want to know how it's going to respond to this kitchen. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You know, and then you just come and just be normal. Yeah. Maybe inside you, you know, you know, but you just try. I think it's very, very important. You're trying to protect them, but you want them to know, you know, our job is not in these things. Our job is, you know, beyond what is happening now. Yeah. You know? That's really good because the storms have come <laughs> yes. and, and what are we built on? Mm. You know, are we built on our circumstances and then we get wiped out or are we built on a rock? Mm. And knowing that, yeah, we're taking our kids. We're, this is a learning opportunity. Mm. This is a moment where grace can be found. Mm. And so many times it's, if I'm not in this and reminding myself of what he says, I'm not gonna be able to respond to that storm when it hits unexpectedly. And there are a lot of unexpected storms that mm. hit a family and a warning or you know, surprises. And, mm. um, and, and so are we built on what are we, um, any other thoughts on that? I was just gonna say, well, I think, well, practically, one thing that um, I think our kids really enjoy is singing. And so, you know, if it comes to singing, you know, we sing Christian songs with them. Yeah. They just love it. Yeah. And that's all part of understanding who God is through song. Yeah. Um, and that brings them a lot of joy practically. And so we try and do a lot of singing with the kids and dancing with the kids yeah. through what they learn in Sunday service or Sunday school. Yeah. Um, so that's one way practically that we kind of um, showcase joy in Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And do you know what's amazing is like, you know, our kids are older, but they still remember all those veggie tail songs oh, and yeah. God Rocks and Colin Buchanan, yeah. you know, whoever, um, the Scripture 2 song, they will remember them when they're 21 and yeah. whatever, yeah. And they, yeah. they still uh, think back on the times when we used to mm -hmm. sing as a family and I think it does actually help mm -hmm. hide God's word in their hearts yes. in a yeah. creative yeah. fun way that's um, not just saying memorize scripture is good for you, you know. Yeah. 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 I was thinking too in like praying with your kids because when you stop, you know, when those storms are coming, when I mean so many times our kids know something's going on, um, we stop and we pray with them and say, you know what, God knows, God knows what's happening, whether it's something going on with a friend sick or um, an accident or whatever has happened, um, a need in our family. And then when God does answer that prayer, we then get to share that with them and yeah, rejoice and praise God. Like when they're tiny, they yeah. can still pray. They, you know, us modeling that for them, I think is really important yeah. way of showing Christ that he is able to be spoken to. He's yeah. your friend too. Mm -hmm. um, and they learned that at a young age, I think it's really beautiful. It is true because I think our, our, our um, as Richard pointed out, our kids watch us and they want to mimic us. And when mom and dad are happy, you know, it does actually roll on to the kids. And then when, when you know you're able to explain to them, this is why I'm happy. You know, this is the way God met us, or this is what God has been doing. It, it is, and I know that you know there's a lot of kids, uh, uh, couples out there with younger kids. And kind of trying to think of well, what does that look like? We'll get to that. We'll start talking about it. But we really want to just be kind of um, tossing around this idea of being, um, you know, anchored on the rock. And so I have one last question for you with regards to um, this article, and that is, um, as parents, did you have that idea, idea even before your kids came? of leaving an impression on them? Like, was that something that you thought of as you're bringing, you know, your kids home from the hospital? Um, did you have a desire to leave an impression on them? And was that design, was that impression, um, what was that impression? Was, would it have been an enthusiasm of a love for Christ or would it have been, you know, uh, to be a good citizen in the world? What would the impression that you would want to have left with your kids when you thought about raising them and that sort of, yeah, article kind of talked about that a little bit, but. Don't mess them up, 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember being pregnant with our first son and um, I was not terrified of the labor. I think, you know, every woman that I spoke to that was scared about the labor and, and whatever, I knew that, Lord willing, that would come to an end. There's, there is a time limit on going through labor, but I was terrified about taking them home. Then it's up to us to raise them and, and you know, in hindsight, looking back, um, and I know in God's sovereignty, our journey through um, being Christian is what it is, but I do wish that back then we would have had a stronger understanding of molding and shaping and training this life in line with the gospel, not just, you know, we want to raise him to have good manners and be a nice boy and not be a juvenile delinquent who ends up in jail or whatever, you know, um, that our goal would have been greater in line with uh, the Lord. But yes, I was, I was very scared not to mess him up. Mm. Yeah, that would be how I felt at the time. Songs? Um, I honestly, all I remember when I was bringing my kids was, I need to sleep. <laughs> 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 I don't think about it. I would have to sleep. Understandable. That was our first. <laughs> um, I think, if I'm being honest, um, back when we first brought Lucas home, who's our first Titus, um, we had great intentions, I think, mm -hmm. um, to train him in the way of the Lord. But deep down, I think ultimately I just wanted to protect him and give him a nice, cushy life, you know, where he didn't come into too much trouble. And um, I thought there may be a way of avoiding these storms. And, so I think that was my ultimate desire and heart mm -hmm. to want to do and um, yeah, but I think yeah, but, yeah, God graciously yeah, isn't that how it shows yeah, yeah, that we need Him through it and we can't do it on our own yeah, yeah. that's right time yeah. and time again yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's the hope of showcasing Christ in our homes yeah. is I like think you know we. Uh, it's not that we forget, but you know, God has a plan. He's created us, yeah. and He has a resource. He's entrusted us with kids mm -hmm. for a reason. There is a plan and a purpose, and we play a really important mm -hmm. role. Now, it's God who saves. Yeah, right. You know, it's God who actually transforms our kids' lives. And but it's us that gets to showcase. Why would they even want to follow Him? Why would they even want to obey Him? Why is He even significant? So it really is quite, um, you, know, you wouldn't be alone in sort of that desire, and, um, yeah, sort of wanting to provide well for your kids and yeah. that kind of thing. What about for you guys? Uh, first, I think, um, you know, I still remember when our kids came, new day when we see babies. Um, I personally like to pray and um, I enjoy reading the Bible. And um, when they came, Nearly everything changes in terms of my routine and everything. Mm. But um, one thing that I still remember that I did is I open up the Bible, mm. even as small as they are. Maybe I'm reading halfway, somebody's crying, what is happening? I'll give it <laughs> go down, take care, give maybe whatever they want, <laughs> and come back. And they will come back, and then I will continue. And so you can see a lot of interrupting yeah. during that. But my focus is still there. I will hold them in their hand and just pray. In their hand. And then, they, like, they, my little daughter, she's, she can still remember one time we, we kind of showing a, a, like a, a movies or, yeah. or, or videos. And then she can still remember my, my daughter, she's now 21. She can still remember, or at least have a sense, the type of song I was singing that time. And then how I try to, <laughs> to, to make her to kind of relax because, but the purpose is like, and you know, I always remind myself that this is a gift from God. Mm -hmm. So if they have a gift from God, yeah. and God is 
give me two minutes to do it. Then I need to still worship. That is the requirement. He wants me to still worship those kids, to care for them. So I know it's part of our responsibility. I know it's challenging, but one thing that I always want to put before them is prayer life and life. Yeah, yeah. It's great. It's so good. It's so good. Well, look, I thought what we would do now is um, we go into uh, breakout rooms, and while uh, Simon's going to put you into some breakout rooms, and while you go to breakout rooms, I'd love for you to discuss these questions um, among yourselves. Um, and the first question is, what do you think your kids would say you and your wife are currently showcasing to them at home? So what would you, what do you think your kids would say that you and your wife are currently showcasing to them at home? And then what are you hoping to showcase to your kids in your home in the future? So what is it currently that you're showcasing? And then what would you like to showcase in your home? And so enjoy that time. We'll give you about seven minutes to discuss that with one another and then we'll bring you back. Thanks for coming back. Um, we have got some great questions um, that have come through. And if you would like to text the questions um, that you can think of that you'd like to ask the panelists um, in regards to more the how to, what does it look like? Um, we'd be happy to sort of try to answer those um, questions for you. We're gonna start this time with um, our first question is going to be this. So guys, what would be your biggest challenge in showcasing Christ to your kids? What's, what, what's your biggest challenge? Do you find? Who wants to go first? Richard, go to time. I'll throw it over to you. So um, I think for me, it would be uh, definitely my sting, you yeah. know, uh, especially uh, could be impatience. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when when things don't go the way I, I was hoping, or when, when someone, you know, um, mucks up and mm -hmm. You know, things get really annoying. I I could struggle with being impatient and maybe angry or something. And I think that is not showcasing Christ, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the sin. You know, that that would be different for everybody, I suppose. You know, but that's one of the things that I could say that, that my kids can see or stress. You know, could be the stress. And sometimes they might say, "Oh, mommy, I'm really stressed." You know, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think that's that's something. Yeah, yeah. so true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Others. Yeah, I think the same with me. Tiredness, stress mm. would be that biggest challenge because then it change the way you react to them or the way they know and you know my kids will know that okay man, that you are tired. Yeah. You know, and yeah, I know that's not the way to show it, you know. And, and sometimes I let them know, I'm sorry I'm tired. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. I think for 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 me the um, the biggest challenge is I have an expectation of what I want it to look like. I wanted everybody to be quiet. I want everybody to participate. I want everybody to understand. I don't want anybody to goof off. So I have this expectation. And then when those expectations aren't met, um, uh, then I find that a real challenge to showcase Christ and not be, you know, um, show the Old Testament side of God where, you know, he's on the fire, on the mountain, <laughs> smoking fire. Um, but I can find that I find that a difficult time when I'm hoping for something and I don't get that outcome. Mm -hmm. um, that, and again, that, really, that relates back to sin, um, mm -hmm. my selfishness. Um, yeah. Uh, so, and then that just takes the, the, the fun out of, um, those times where I'm seeking to train my children about God and I'm much more like, just sit there, shut up and enjoy God, right? <laughs> you know, which obviously, yeah, okay, Dad, sure, we love that. Um, yeah, so don't get a lot of um, good out of that. Mm -hmm. but, um, would you guys have anything? Yeah, similarly. similarly. Oh. Um, just for me personally, it would be when my kind of space my kingdom per se is disrupted yeah. mm -hmm. and you know I have this plan of how I want my day to go similar to you Patrick or what I want parenting to look like mm -hmm. and then it doesn't work out that way and my selfishness just wants to react mm -hmm. um, yeah not in a loving way not in a way that showcases Christ mm -hmm. but 
just in my seat. Sure. To an act in my seat. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah, but ultimately it's me wanting to be yeah. like on the throne. You know? Sure. So take us into your homes uh, and, and tell us what um, what you know part of showcasing Christ and obviously you have got the the wise and the foolish and then teaching our children um, about God's word and wanting to let them know and understand what God's word is. Take us into your homes. What does that look like? Um, is that a weekly thing? Is it a monthly thing? Is it an everyday thing? Um, and, and what would you do with your kids? What does that look like? So can you give us a bit of a picture inside of your homes of what that time might look like where you're actually trying to intentionally explain? Um, my kids now, they're like adults or teenagers. Mm -hmm. um, when they, when they were kids, it's a little bit different, so we were together, but now um, they, we have, have a plan, like every weekend I need to meet up with them, which they, will, um, they, they go through um, different books in the Bible, and then we will sit down and they will just tell me where, what they are reading, and then there's a book that we kind of read in the same chapter so together, and then they will just tell me about their lifestyle. So every for for my for my own for my kids, every weekend we meet together one to one. One will be like on Sunday, one will be on Saturday. I have this time. Then we we'll just sit down. And then we we'll just just twenty minutes yeah. for half an hour. We pray together, and then they tell me about how their Bible reading look like and their prayers. Sure, that's good. Yeah, and I think it has changed over the years, like what Kylie said. So. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it depends on the age of your children, it depends on their needs. So we have Therese, he's 11 and he has special needs and that, that might all look a little bit different. Um, so when they were little, we kind of tried family devotions. We did that for a while. Um, we had material that we were using. Um, when they became teenagers, that got a little bit more tricky. Sometimes they found it boring, didn't say anything. And I remember we were sitting like, oh, okay, is that wanting to contribute, no, okay. <laughs> so it, it was sometimes a bit challenging, um, but at the moment we just try, because our kids are older, we try, try to meet them where they're at. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we change things up. So we had sometimes family meetings where we call it talk and treat, TNT. Yeah, yeah. TNT. Uh, so we had like um, kind of snacks and stuff and we would talk about a certain topic, um, you know, that, that we thought might be good for them to talk about. That's great. Yeah. So yeah, it, it, we kind of try to, and it, it, to be honest, it has sometimes been challenging. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I remember them. several times in the yeah. morning on Sunday, we set up the Bible, get ready before breakfast. Let's talk about read something, and they are all looking at me like, "What are we doing here?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I> was like, <laughs> and you, know, for me, it's really very upsetting. But sure. And I will carry that to the church. I don't know, you know, like it's like you're not doing anything. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but there is something. Yeah. Right. You're planting the seed. That's right. Yes. Regardless of anything, you're planting the seed. Yeah. But you're I doing mean, more than you're actually doing more than planting the seed. You're showcasing Christ. That's right. You're showing them that this is important. This and is important. that's okay if you don't want to, you know, part I'm disappointed that you don't want to partake. But this is important enough for us to be here and be faithful. Show. It's a picture of what God's like. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's a picture that He's He's there and ready. So, what a beautiful example of everything. Mm -hmm. so, that's really cool. That's you really want to hear a funny one? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so when we had these challenging moments, you know, kids becoming teenagers, one of our kids said, "You know what, Dad? I don't want to listen anymore. If it was Dave Taylor, I would, but you're not as good." So. <laughs> <laughs> Or Rebs will take Lucas Eleanor out 
um, and just have breakfast together. Um, and I think it's one of those times where it's quite um, rare and unique and a really good opportunity because of how packed the house gets just to take your kid and you alone. Um, and there's a lot of things that, you know, six-year-olds have in mind and three, four-year-olds have in mind. They have a lot to say when we start asking them. Um, and so, you know, it's an opportunity for us to kind of really, um, you know, work on some characters of the world that we want to build in them. Um, and so we go through those things with them. We have fun. Um, sometimes we want bike rides. So it's not always about that. Um, talking about, yeah, but enjoying the time as well. Um, what else do we do there? Um, yeah, we pray together. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a good opportunity for us to kind of showcase Christ in that yeah. you know, moment that we have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you do it once a week, do you say, or do you do it every day? One just, Saturday, and then we do like alternating. Alternating. Yeah. Alternating. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's good. One, one Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And Richie reads um, the Bible with the kids in the evening before bed, yeah. which, is, which is always a treat for them because they want to push back their time. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So, yes. so yeah. Just whatever it takes. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. That's when I get full attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. 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 Can I encourage you, you know, because we did open our kids to where they were looking at these picture Bibles. Mm -hmm. And just recently I pulled one of the picture Bibles out and I, I was showing my daughter. I remember she said, I remember this. She was so like, you know, mm -hmm. oh, this brought so many memories back, mm -hmm. you know, to her. So they, they do they do remember yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. We, um, I was actually asking a couple of my girls today, do you remember how mom and I, uh, you know, what do you remember about mom and I doing devotions with you? And they were, uh, they recalled, you know, we used to try to do things really creative. So we had seven kids, all at different ages, but we would call them all in um, at the, into the lounge room and we would, you know, try to run like a little bit of a mini Sunday school, really. I mean, um, <laughs> we and, had a class. Uh, and, um, but, but, you know, we would definitely uh, uh, try to be creative and use different resources that we thought would give us opportunities to talk more about, um, um, about God and who he is and what he says. And look, uh, Meg used to say to me, speaking of funny stories, Meg, we used to say to me, you've got to land the plane. Like they've only got this, you know, five minute attention span. But I used to preach to them and uh, full on, you know, take, take down notes. And, you know, <laughs> and so, but anyway, we used to see, um, I, one of the things I used to do with them when they were little is um, because I wanted them to get to know the Bible. I wanted them to be familiar with the Bible. I used to do Bible drills with them. I don't know if you know Bible drills, but basically a Bible drill is where you hold the Bible like this. And then, um, you know, say, okay, find John 316, because I wanted them to get familiar with where things were at in the Bible. And so then they would have little competitions and we used to mm -hmm. throw out chocolates and whatever to, you know, but, so much fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, some of the things that we used to do was we used to read books. So we'd read um, uh, Pilgrim's Progress, yeah. Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, we would watch videos together, uh, but we tried to keep it fun and creative and engaging. Um, there have been times where we've allowed the kids as they've gotten older to share their testimonies and, um, you know, or bring a devotion to the family um, and share that on a family night. So we've just tried to keep it sort of like it's not boring to to hear God's word. It's not boring to not think about God's word and what does that mean to you and, and, and how, what, how does that affect your life? So it happens around the dinner table. Because we homeschool, we get a lot more opportunity with the kids. Um, so in total transparency, um, I don't have a, a weekly sort of um, uh, catch up with the kids because um, it feels like we're always um, you know, uh, having conversations. I would say that when they were younger, I was a bit more um, intentional, a bit of a helicopter dad, um, quick about, you know, addressing things. And then I just saw the fruit of that was possibly not real helpful. And so um, I thought, okay, what's my job? I think I bought into the lie that it was my job to save my kids, but that's not the job that God's called me to. He's called me to train our kids. And so I've, I've taken a step back um, and Meg does devotions with the girls. I catch in with the boys. I do daddy-daughter dates with the girls and try to catch up with them. 
but I haven't been as intentional because I've just tried to change um, what I've done. Because, um, um, yeah, I've, yeah. So we're still, we still have a relationship and we still talk about the things of God and have that sort of conversation, but that's what it would look like in our home. We um, a bit more, a, a little bit different. Now in your homes, um, you know, obviously we're training our kids in this. What would you say to the couple that perhaps um, hasn't um, had Christian parents? Um, and so they're hearing this idea of showcasing Christ um, and they're probably possibly thinking, okay, well, where would I even start or what would it look like? How would you encourage somebody who this is possibly completely foreign um, and um, they're thinking, okay, this sounds great. I love the sound of this, but where do I begin? What should I do? How would you encourage um, I think it's it's really helpful um, to check in with other Christians who have uh, you know who are doing it at the moment. Um, I, I just I was just thinking through like my parents they were not Christians uh, until we were ten or eleven. Uh, my sister and I. And they, they didn't have any ideas how to do it, really, you know, how to, but they really wanted to. So they, they were talking to other people, they were yeah. getting ideas from them, and they tried different things. So they, uh, but obviously it had to be something that worked for us. I remember that they were trying different things, so different like devotion books or something. And um, so I, I wouldn't say that necessarily that, that has to be a problem, because even if your parents did something for you when you were a child and they were Christians, it doesn't mean that that would work for your family. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to really, I mean, pray about it and talk to other people who have more experience or who are doing it right now and then find out what works for you yeah. and, and your family. Yeah. I think similar to that, I think, because um, we both grew up in Christian households, but we were still kind of at a loss when it came to parenting as to how to showcase Christ to the kids. And I think we, as time goes on, we, we're realising that it's not Christian parents that we've had, you know, it's not that that qualifies us to be able to mm -hmm. showcase Christ. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, God gives us the grace for the task that he set before us. Mm -hmm. and, um, and as Christine said, yeah, that's different for not just every family, but for every child. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like you can do a big copy paste mm -hmm. of what you've seen. Um, but yeah, similarly, just asking people to disciple you in it. I think that's one of the biggest ways we've grown in that. Um, people that people in your church community that you do see are doing that well or are striving to do that well. Mm -hmm. And just asking them, can you talk to us about this and help us? And we really want to learn from you guys. And, mm -hmm. um, and then I think that's helpful because they're walking alongside you mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, reading some article somewhere or um, listening to a podcast. They can't really disciple you in it and keep you accountable and check in. Um, so that's been really instrumental for us. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah, getting people to walk with us. So what I hear you touching on is a little bit of if you're uh, new to this and you're not knowing where to start, it really is going to require humility. Humility right. is a real attribute that we as parents need to grow in. And I think um, the humility to sort of say, could somebody help me? But the humility to also be able to, if you haven't done it, but you'd like to do it, is to, in the humility, which, which is what we would do, is um, sit down with the kids and say, this is what we're, this is what dad wants us to do as family, or this is what mom would like us to do. And, um, and we're going to go for 10 minutes, five minutes. We're going to just try. We're going to aim for once a week. We're going to aim for twice a week. And what we're going to do is, um, you know, mom, dad have found a book that we're going to go through and we're just going to read it. Mom's going to pray. And we may even listen to a song. We may ask a question about it, but we're just gonna we're just gonna start because it's so important. And mom and dad see the significance that there's the way of the wise and there's the way of the fool. And storms are gonna come, and we don't want to be blown away by the storms. We actually want to be anchored in the rock. 
involved in. We want to anchor. We want to be anchored in the one who has told us how to live. And so I think that might be a way that you could um, start if if this is new to you, uh, or you're just thinking, how do I how do I do this? It's exercising humility and just being candid about this is where I want us to go. And do you have any questions? Do you have any concerns? You know, is there anything you would like to do? Bring the kids along with you, um, and, and don't be afraid to get it wrong. Don't be afraid to try something and that not work. Don't stop. <laughs> I think I would encourage you to pick up something different, or talk to somebody else and say, "Hey, what are you? What are you using?" Um, do you guys have anything? Yeah, I think another thing that, that I think is more important in game is taking them to church. Because the environment really means a lot to them. Um, they might be thinking of a mom and dad, maybe you're just kind of crazy, you know. Uh, but if you take them to church, they know, okay, they do the same thing, you know, or, you know, they, they, they can relate to other kids who already maybe they've got this training. And, and for, for the parents too, you, I think it is very important to take them to church because they see you. And they see the group, and the kids can join the other group, particularly like in our church, uh, where you know everything is set up. So I think again, it's, it's part of the economy because you're pointing them to something, you know, you make them to focus on something. And I think, yeah, church will be another part of you know showcase. Now, what would you say to um, uh, someone who's married to an unbeliever? Um, and they've got kids um, that they want to come to church, but there's kind of this wrestle, um, and they really want to have Christ showcased in their home, but maybe their spouse isn't in favor of that. How would you how would you encourage them? Um, hmm. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. No, yeah, I was going to say it is um, exceptionally hard for um, for either uh, husband or wife if you're the believer in your marriage and you're married to a non-believer. And I think you know James one talks about crying out to God for wisdom, and He mm -hmm. will give it to you abundantly. I think that would be the first thing. <laughs> And the daily thing to do, obviously, crying out to the Lord for wisdom. How am I going to still live harmoniously in my marriage, but um, and honor, you know, my husband or respect my wife's difference of faith or beliefs, but I still feel it's very important to showcase Christ where I can. And I think part of that is your own practice. I mean, I think that's the same even if you are married to a believer. It's the same thing. Your private practice, your um, spending time in the Word, your love for Christ is going to show Jesus to your kids, yeah. even if you're married to someone who's not a believer. Even for someone, you know, for um, for single moms or single dads who you're the believing uh, parent and you share custody with someone who does not uh, follow Christ um, and that's hard as well because they are looking to both parents and, and seeing two different things but I think if you are loving Jesus yourself and what that outwardly looks like you know the different things that we've, um, we've touched on reading the word getting to church praying in front of your kids Kids love to copy us, don't they, from the youngest age. And, you know, Kings and Chronicles all through, you know, the Old Testament talks about, you know, the various kings. And each time it says, and they walked in the way of their fathers. And I think that is a picture of actually how our kids will copy us, whether good or bad. Um, so I think even though I'm sure it's a huge challenge to be in that situation, I think it's absolutely possible to still showcase Christ starting with your love for Jesus and cultivating mm -hmm. that. Um, but surround yourself with support, you know, who else can you involve in that? Because obviously that's that's a lot harder than being united together in that goal of wanting to showcase Christ. That's great. I think, I think the beauty is also the fact that we have a Heavenly Father who knows our situation. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that you're in that situation, it's not new to him, he's not so and when we are placed in that situation, knowing that God always equips us 
and gives us the way forward. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we see it so many countless times in the Bible. You know, can you imagine if Moses had to take his people, uh, God's people out of Israel and God said, you're on your own. You know, or Noah, you know, there's a flood coming, but you're on your own. You know, God never does that. He knows the situation that you are in. And he always helps you and provides a way for you. And I think trusting in the Lord, who knows that unique situation and calling upon him for help. I think God will always, you know, find that way for you. Mm -hmm. Maybe it would be helpful. I, I could imagine if I was in that situation, I would probably want to find one or two people that I could talk about this with, yeah. you know, to maybe pray with them about it or, you know, kind of share my struggles, get some ideas from them or encouragement. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's great. One of the questions that's come in um, has been, what, um, what does it look like or how do you showcase Christ um, when you are at the end of your tether and you've just lost all patience? What there are some practical ways um, that you can showcase Christ um, in the heat of the moment? What do you think? Just in trying to think of how we can reflect the Father who is, um, you know, slow to anger, abounding in love, merciful. How how can we showcase Christ as parents in the heat of the moment or when we're at the end of our days? Um, this is a daily occurrence for me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it happens all the time. And our kids are still young. And um, I think, you know, God's still sanctifying me and working on my patience and my anger. Um, but I've found that um, I can be very reactive. And so when the Spirit helps me to recognize that it's coming, and you know, initially it's praying that God help me to catch myself um, and asking Him. Because I think for many years I wasn't able to do that and I was just going with what I was feeling and um, you have to ask forgiveness and apologise to my children. But I think now when I am, by God's grace, able to catch myself, I do try and step away and give myself a minute or two to calm down and really just ask God to help me. Because I think in that moment it's beyond me to... Do what I need to do. It's like I, I can't do it without God's help. Mm -hmm. And so almost giving myself a timeout. Um, and and then once God in his kindness has done that, then going to the kids. And because one thing I think we're we're learning is we never want to be training or disciplining our kids in anger. Um, so yeah, and we want to be doing it in love. So mm -hmm. When I am finding the anger rising up or um, the frustration, just giving myself a moment, mm -hmm. uh, asking for God's help. Mm -hmm. um, if Richard's there, asking for him to pray for me. Mm -hmm. then, um, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. But I think also, um, it's, you know, it, it occurs, like Richard was saying, it occurs yeah. frequently. And so, you know, sometimes planning and thinking ahead. So Rex and I, you know, we would sit down on day night. We might use that as an opportunity for us to say, well, what can we do when those situations occur? You know, how can we stop ourselves yeah. from reaching that point where we're, right. we're disciplining our kids out of anger? Mm -hmm. And so planning what we're going to do, mm -hmm. um, like what Rex said, maybe it's, you know, time out for me. I'm going to pull myself back. You know, if I can, maybe I can jump in. I don't know. So, but I think it'll be a really good thing for, you know, just being proactive, being proactive yeah. and thinking about beforehand and putting that into place. Yeah. And there's grace in that. Yeah. And then inevitably, there's times where you do slip up and you do react and you yell and sure. do the wrong thing and you sin. Yeah. So, repenting yeah. to mm -hmm. God and then mm -hmm. apologizing and asking for mm -hmm. forgiveness for the kids. She's also a daily occurrence. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I think too that equally you can showcase Christ to yeah, acknowledge to your kids mm -hmm. and ask their forgiveness. Yeah. You know, mommy should not have yeah. yelled at you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mommy should not have spoken to you yeah. because I'm angry with yeah. you. 
um, and mummy needs Jesus too. Yeah. And I think that showcases our need for Christ, yeah. which can then be showing our kids that they need him as well, yeah. just as much. Mm. And I think, you know, training our kids the way that God, the Father, trains us mm. can be a helpful. I mean, it's hard, like, you know, when you're at the end of your tether, it can be very hard to think, God is loving, God's patient with me, He mm. has clear boundaries, but He's mm. gracious. Mm. Um, he says no, but He's kind. Mm. In the heat of the moment, it can be really hard to recall those mm. things, I think. But um, I think it's helped me to think, would God speak to me like that? You know, would God yell at me? Would God get angry and say, I can't believe you've done this again? You know, no, he doesn't. He, he's calm and patient and gentle, um, long-suffering with me. So I can be that with my kids. It's funny, you talked about um, sort of that time out and mm -hmm. you talked about planning. And I think what, what you're talking about is, is, is completely and utterly wise. Um, uh, you know, it's not the way of the fool, it's the way of the wise. Mm -hmm. And it's actually planning for the storm. So a wise man's going to build on the rock because the storms are going to come. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, <laughs> funny story, uh, I planned that I knew that I was going to lose it with the kids. And um, that, that was uh, something that I had to grow in and I wanted to put to death. It's not correcting my kids in anger. And so I would send them to their room. Well, there have been several children who've been left in their room and I've gone to the shops because I forgot that I told them to go to their room and wait for me. <laughs> um, just, you know, um, it, you know, the longer it took, the worse they, the more fearful they became. Because they knew that was really, really, That must be really lovely. In fact, I've had a few phone calls. I've had a few phone calls from me saying, they're still in their bedroom. <laughs> Are you going to be home soon? And I'm like, now nah, we better. <laughs> but, um, but planning is a, no, not really. But planning is a, is a really important element. And here's another thing that you've touched on, which I think is beautiful. Accountability in our parenting and spurring one another on to showcase Christ is helpful. I haven't always appreciated Meg's um, eyes on me to help me, um, you know, and grow in holiness and grow as a dad and as a husband. Mm -hmm. But there's a real amount of wealth. And I remember one time when I was correcting my kids in anger and I came to the bedroom and Meg said, you know, honey, that's the first time in a long time that I haven't heard you rehearse the gospel with our son when you corrected him. Mm -hmm. You see, the whole point of this correction idea um, is to show them the way of wise, to show them that there is a better way and not the way of the flood, the, you know, the storm's going to come. What are we building on? And so I would encourage you, moms and dads, is to um, listen to one another and encourage each other. Point out the evidence of grace. You really used a lot of patience there. I saw that, and that is beautiful. That brings God glory. Or you even be able to say, hey, look, you sound a little bit upset. Can I serve you in any way? Um, now, do you want me to step in? Now, that, that doesn't always work sometimes. And, you know, feelings, can, it might not be said in the best way. But ultimately, you're wanting to showcase Christ to your kids. And so I think plan to do that. Have a, have a conversation, like Regina Rebson pointed out, of what is that going to look like when we're met with this sort of trial. So, okay, Christine, would you add anything? Yeah, I think you guys have said so many things, uh, which uh, yeah, most times we don't do it so bad. And um, I personally, I used to be a reactionary parents like did wrong that's it <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> you have you cross the line as a consequence yeah. you know but you know going back to the book of Proverbs, mm -hmm. it said train and that is not training mm -hmm. training is to teach them mm -hmm. to help them to say okay to create like a, a culture where um, what they expect from me what I, I'm expecting from them. Mm -hmm. So they know if they cross it, this is so I'm training them. It's not like, okay, you cross the line, you get it. So it's completely different. And, and then when they become like teenagers, you mentor them. But when they are kids, you train. Okay, like, this is the way this step, follow my step or something. And I think that is so unique. And obviously, you have to do it together. Like, um, you know, like what you just said. It's so beautiful. Like, okay, I, Asking my wife, do you think I can you assess me in that? How do I respond? 
that I responded to wearing all this stuff. And I, and I think that is it because we can't do it alone. That is the call of yeah. God upon us. You know that we are not perfect. We will never always do it right. But the joy to know that the beauty of it is that we can bring all this before the throne of God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, guys, as we come to a close, I just want to ask you one last question, um, yeah. which I think is really uh, sort of the crux of the night. And that is, I mean, in order for us to showcase Christ, we ourselves need to, um, you know, be ourselves looking to Christ and enjoying time with Him. Um, what would you say have been some helpful resources for you as parents? How have you, um, you know, is there a great book that you enjoy reading? Is there a good Bible that you enjoy studying together? Um, what do you do to fuel your own hearts and souls as parents um, for when the storms do come? I mean, uh, every time, you know, we know there's always storm, but every time I always go to Psalm 127, verse 3, that children are the gift from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, I mean, He gave it to us. Yeah. And then every time I ask God, ask myself, whose, whose child is this? Yeah. This is the child of God. Mm -hmm. And so, if that encourages me, and, and, and I still remember this story like over two years or one and a half years ago, we're going through the book of Exodus, and then the first chapter of Exodus, I think chapter two, and um, this, this, this story was uh, Moses, when Moses was born, and I know everybody knows that story. I think it really encouraged me because maybe you are here and you're going through difficulties. I think I'm hoping this will encourage you because the picture came like, okay, you know the story of Moses? Three, maybe three months, according to the story, he was, um, yeah, when he was born, because at that particular time, every child, every male child have to be, either they put them in, they have to kill them actually. And he was born, he was kept in a basket. And then they, they protecting him for three months, right? And at one point they are unable to hide this guy, this uh, Moses again, and they let him go. Both they are washing. The parents are washing. So there might be another situation maybe in your life and you think, ah man. Uh, it's hard, but you can let, let, let him go or let that child go and trust it in the hands of God. Because Moses, even the whole story, like this guy was brought up in a foreign country and foreign culture, and God still used him. And, and I think that is really encouraging for me to see that uh, this, uh, this is a child of God. This is not my child, but the Lord gave it to me to just take care of them. But ultimately, it's God. So I need to give it back to Him. I need to ask Him to help me to train. I need to, you know, just wash and trust God. Mm -hmm. So the resource that you would be recommending is just trusting God, God's word, and, yeah. and yeah, that trust in God. Yeah, that's beautiful. I'd say, um, other than the Word of God, which you know, has always been the go-to, um, just community has been the greatest resource for us. Um, when we were lost, we didn't know what to do as parents, or when we thought we were doing the right thing. Um, just looking out for um, you know, brothers and sisters in Christ who've gone through it before, or going through the thick of it right now, and seeing what they're doing, and how they're worshiping the Lord and raising the showcase of Christ, um, just the community around you who's doing that has, has been one of the blessings that God has poured out in terms of the resource for us as a family. Um, just one other thing, if I could throw out, um, there's a book that I'm reading, and I always get the title wrong, is it Future Men or Real Men? Future Men, Future Men, Future Men by Douglas Wilson. Um, and that's a book about um, how to raise boys and men in pretty much uh, in the way of the Lord. And that's been uh, 
um, such a blessing for me as well. So yep. um, for those who are interested in that, you should know. Thank you. Yeah. 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 You got anything? Um, yeah, community, like you said. Um, one book that really helped me was Treasuring Christ When Your Hands Are Full by mm. Gloria Thurman. Um, that was helpful when the kids were, well, when we were in the thick of it. Um, Paul Tripp's parenting book is also really great. Um, but um, these verses have been really helpful for me. Um, a friend sent a few of them to me when I was just sharing what we're going through with training and disciplining our kids. Um, one's Proverbs 22, 15, which is, Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline drives it far from him. Um, also, Hebrews 12, 6, where it says, For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. And then lastly, Galatians 6, 9, which, is, which says, And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will be if we do not give up. So those have been sort of really helpful because um, it is very repetitive and it's a hard slog. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Christy, for you? Yeah, so um, what has really helped me uh, when, I, when I've gone through a really difficult time of parenting is I had like a, um, a Bible audio, um, audio commentary from a guy called David Guzik. And I, I just went, I just listened to it sometimes for hours and hours. I just needed to have like the, the gospel. I just needed to hear what God is saying in his word, you know, and to be comforted by that. I mean, I, I can say that sometimes has really almost saved my life, you know, like listening to that and, you know, being in cash. Yes, God, you, are, you, are, you know what you're doing. Um, yes, I, I really love that. Sometimes I, I listen to music. That really helps me too, to worship music, um, to just get, you know, to be centered again, just say, okay, you know, God just talked to me through the song sound. I, I'm not really feeling weary or, or down. And, mm -hmm. I just need to hear it from you. And I think what also helps us as a couple is we, we pray every evening together. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we just, oh, and before we do, we talk, you know, we talk through the day how, how, how we think it's been, and we pray for our kids, for our family, and everything. And I think that that's also something that has brought things back into perspective so many times, you know, when, when I had a really bad day, I was kind of getting caught up in kind of stuff, you know, talking with me with kind of really helping me with great about it. That's great. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I mean, I would agree with all of those things. I think um, still the best book for my, uh, me personally that I've read, and I think I say it every opportunity, again, <laughs> would be Age of Opportunities by True. Even though, again, it's written for uh, parents of teenagers, I would highly recommend it to anyone who has kids, even, you know, babies and toddlers, because the story of the book, he really talk, he's talking about me and my sin and how I'm going to approach parenting. Mm -hmm. My kids are not the problem, I am the problem. And that, again, has repetitively helped me enormously. Um, and I think Matthew 5, uh, 14, it says, you are the light of the world, Jesus was, talking um, after the Sermon on the Mount. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And I know those verses are often talking about mission and, you know, outward, but our kids are our mission field, mm -hmm. primarily to start with. That's our first... Um, our first calling is to shine that light to our kids and so that's a constant challenge to me and as everyone else said, definitely fail often, don't do it well. By God's grace, uh, he enables us to keep going and keep trying and it's Christ in us that does it mm -hmm. and Christ is ultimately the one who saves our kids, not our good parenting, but um, mm -hmm. we definitely need his grace to do it. Yeah. Look, guys, just in closing, I would love to say to you that, you know, there is no set of essentials like the article that we posted that will necessarily work for your children. There are no sort of strategies that are going to ideally work for your child. Your child is individually, uniquely made by God and has been entrusted to you 
uh, to raise and to train and to showcase him. And so I would just want to encourage you the best way that you could ever showcase Christ to your child is by being amazed by the gospel, that Christ died for your sins. Like that truly is the best news when you think about that. If Christ truly is, has died for my sins, he came, lived a sinless life, did what we would never do, was um, killed and crucified, um, buried and then rose again and is coming again. That totally changes everything. And it is the best news that our kids need to hear. And it's they need to see that it affects the way that we think and we do and we serve and what we say. So um, I, um, I hope that you feel encouraged by our time together. There are other questions that we didn't get a chance, unfortunately, uh, to answer. But thank you so much for, um, for coming out. But I hope this kind of uh, creates opportunity for conversation to be had within your growth groups and within gospel communities. Um, and so I'll just close in prayer. And um, again, thank you so much for, for joining in. Let me pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you that um, you loved us so much that you sent your one and only Son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And Lord, we thank you that our names have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And thank you that you've entrusted us with children. And Lord, you are the ones that know them. You know their names and their frames. You know their strengths and their weaknesses. And you ask us, you've asked us, Lord, to um, be examples, be ambassadors, faithful ambassadors. And Lord, you know our own challenges and our weaknesses um, uh, and our strength. And so, Lord, we recognize we need more grace. And thank you that your new morning mercies are always available for us. Every morning, great is your faithfulness. And so would we spend time with our commander-in-chief getting orders from him on how to serve him with the breath that he's given us in our lungs to love our spouse, to love our children, and to love this, pl this planet that you placed us to live in for our good and your glory. So, Lord, we thank you for this time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, guys.